Hi everyone, Radic here from NetVault. I'm here at one of our end user clients to demonstrate our unique NBN with 4G failover service and how this works in a real life production environment. Now we're inside the client's comms rack at the moment and if you have a look here, we've got some equipment that we're gonna showcase. The first piece of equipment that we've got here is what's called an NBN NCD, Network Connection Device. This is the device that connects the customer's copper in their comms rack to a fiber distribution point unit in the street provided by NBN Co. Light status there, link status to the DPU, and a DSL light showing that we've got a layer two DSL connection. This light here is showing LAN activity or activity across that link with, a real, with real traffic going across the link. We usually try to label these services so that we've got a location ID and a copper pair identifier. It just makes it a lot easier for troubleshooting things later on down the track. Over here, we have a Cisco router. Now this Cisco router is rather unique in that we use BGP and MPLS technology within this router to achieve our failover. We've got a link back through to the NCD here and these lights here indicate our 4G LTE traffic. Connect, connected on LTE at the moment and this is the signal strength that the service gets. It gets a pretty good RSSI or signal strength, but there's a lot of interference in here um, from a interference on the signal to noise ratio, which I'll show you guys shortly. From this Cisco router, we then feed that into the firewall that's run by the channel partner. So we don't get involved too much here. We let the channel partners run those. And then that feeds into the network switch, again, managed and maintained by the channel partner. We're focusing on these pieces of equipment here. On my laptop, I've got here a ping test. We're pinging 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Those are Google's DNS servers. And they run in Sydney, we're in Brisbane, so we're getting a nice 17 to 18 millisecond ping time down to Sydney. Not too bad. Let's run a speed test on the service and see what it looks like. So good old speedtest.net is what we're gonna use. And we're gonna hit go on that speed test. Now, one thing to note, see this IP address that we've got down the bottom here. During our testing, this IP address won't change. So keep an eye on that. We've got a nice six millisecond ping to our speed test server. And you can see here, we're getting around about 93, 94 megabits per second. We've just topped 95 megabits per second. By the way, this is an NBN traffic class four service. It's up to 100 megabits per second download, up to 40 megabits per second on the upload. And you can see 95 megabits per second on the download, Pretty good, especially when you consider you're supposed to do 10% protocol overheads on these. Upload speed tests, not too bad, 37 megabits per second, smack bang on with 10% protocol overheads on that as well. Not much network traffic happening here in the background. So let's generate some. Over here, I've got a download. Here, I've got a download happening, which I'll just resume, to downloading a CentOS Linux ISO file. Nice big file that allows us to generate some traffic. As that starts to download, you'll start to see that that speed will increase. Let's check on that and see how that's looking uh, after that starts to download a bit of data. Over here, we have Netmon. Netmon is our monitoring and management platform where we monitor all our clients' connections. So if a client has an issue or service goes offline, our NOC guys get alerted and straight away can action that without having to, uh, uh, to rely on someone calling in. Let's just log in here and see what we've got visible here. What about over here? There's our downloads of that uh, Linux ISO, getting around about six to seven megabytes per second. Not too bad. All right. In Netmon, we have a nice little map showing where this connection is physically located. And if I zoom right out here on this particular service, you'll see that's located here in Brisbane. If we had multiple services, you know, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne, one in Perth, we'd see a map of Australia here for that particular client. Channel partners see that as well, where they see all their clients listed there and up and down status as a result of that. Looking further in here, if we go and actually click into the service, we can see statistics about that service. The ping time, 19 milliseconds, what the download speed is on that traffic, how much traffic is actually being downloaded live on that service. And if you look at the side here, you can see we've got an interval here that we update this every 60 seconds. Here is our NBN traffic. This is the amount of data that's being pulled over the NBN interface, currently showing 57 megabits per second. And you can see historical information on this as well. Here's that data over the last two hours. 
last two days, 30 days. It gives us a good idea from a historical perspective what's happening with the client's connection. Typically, they're downloading and maxing out the connections, causing them to have issues. Great way of troubleshooting that. You can see here, this particular service has a DMZ interface. That is what connects into the customer's firewall and our channel partner takes over from there looking after the internal side of the network. But what I wanted to show you is here this 4G LTE statistics. You can see here, we have quite a bit of signal to noise ratio problems here, too much interference, but still we'll see what the service looks like when we do our testing in a moment. I'm gonna go and now put these back to where I had them so we can see what's happening. And let's see what happens when we fail the service by unplugging the telephone cable. That's the MBN connection that we've got there. And if we just have a look at what's happening with the light status on our NCD, I go and unplug that. And you see straight away, the lights go off on the DSL, LAN, and the link to the DPU, distribution point unit, in the street. Down here, let's have a look and see what's happened. Our pings have gone from a 17, 18 millisecond ping, and we've lost one ping packet. That's the one second failover that I'm talking about. Okay, we failed over, and here we're running on the 4G LTE interface, showing about 100 millisecond ping times, thereabouts. Let's just pause this download and just analyze in a bit more detail what we've actually done here. So, ping times, when I, when I stop that download, they'll go back to around about 30 to 40 milliseconds, normal sort of for a 4G LTE interface. Slower than NBN, but still quite usable. So, is now showing that we still have a connection. We didn't lose that at all. We lost one ping packet. Let's go and run a speed test and have a look at what's happening from a speed test perspective. Notice our public static IP address here ends in .195. If I run that test again now, let's see what IP address it shows that we've got. And you can see here, it still shows .195. Ping times have gone from six milliseconds that we had before up to 21 milliseconds. So it is a little bit slower, it's to be expected. But a 21 millisecond connection is still fine for voice services, uh, internet data transactions, all your YouTube videos, they'll all still flow through pretty smoothly. Download speed, 10 megabits per second that we're getting on this connection, even with all that 4G LTE interference, not too bad. Upload speeds, 13 megabits per second all while still having the IP address that you can see there ends in .195. Fantastic. Let's have a look at Netmon and see what Netmon is reporting now for us. If I go and refresh the screen, you'll see that we have zero kilobits per second now on the NBN connection. That's all failed. And if we go and have a look at our 4G LTE traffic, you'll notice that's now gone red. That's failed. Okay, you can see here the service has failed over to 4G. There's the traffic there that is now flowing on the NBN interface. Fantastic. Let's just fail this back. I'm gonna plug this cable in. It'll take a few minutes for it to synchronize. So we wanna get these lights back on and show the fail back on that. So I'm just gonna plug that back in. There we go. And this will take a few minutes to synchronize. While it's doing that, I want to show you a few things. Here in Netmon, we've got something called NetFlow statistics. NetFlow statistics are a fantastic way for us to be able to isolate exactly who's doing what, who's downloading what on the internet. Where, are all my, where is all my download usage going? Why is the internet running slower than normal because of you know, someone doing a large download? Here in NetFlow statistics, you can see we split this out into different traffic types. And you can see here we've got a lot of WW traffic, web traffic. Hmm, so be it. Click on top talkers over here. Top talkers are the top computers on the network that are doing the most downloads. And you can see here from this pie graph, there's 75% of the traffic for that particular interval being used by this particular connection. That's the download that I was running for the Linux ISO file. And that's going to the destination being the customer's firewall. Remember the customer's firewall is up here and that's what's maintained by our channel partner. If we go back onto that service, again, this DMZ traffic 
is what's going to the customer's firewall. And again, we can see traffic details for the last two hours being the live data, two days, 30 days, 365 days. This is almost a mirror of the NBN traffic since that traffic is all being passed through a DMZ interface to the customer's firewall. The customer's firewall has its own live public static IP address that during failover, again, there's no changes that need to be done within the firewall. The firewall still sees that our Cisco router is the default gateway for the service and sends all traffic to it. The Cisco router is then responsible to use BGP to work out, do I send traffic to the NBN interface or do I send traffic to the 4G LTE interface? That's again why we use Cisco routers to achieve this. Let's have a look at our NBN NCD. And there we go, we've got light status starting to come back on that. Great, we've got our link to the DPU, VDSL is back, and our LAN light is flashing again. Fantastic. Now, when that comes back, BGP is not gonna fail that over straight away. It'll check to make sure the service is online, it's happy, make sure everything is stable before then it moves traffic from the 4G LTE interface back over to the NBN interface. If we go and have a look at here, our ping test to Google, and if we just scroll up a bit here, you'll notice there is a section here where we change from a 40 millisecond ping there to a 17 millisecond ping right in the middle there. So that's showing the service failing back from 4G LTE back over to NBN, which we can do without any packet loss at all since you know, there is no cable being unplugged. But just to prove that there's no smoke and mirrors going on here, what happens if we physically sever the copper cable? Don't try this at home. If I go and take that cable and give it a little, what's just happened there? You'll see straight away, the NCD has lost all its lights. And over here, our ping tests, we've lost one ping packet, we've gone from a 17 millisecond ping to a 35 millisecond ping. Going back over here, Netmon will take 60 seconds to update that and show you that it's now failed over to the 4G LTE interface. But there you have it. That's how we can utilize MBN with 4G LTE interfaces and utilize MPLS technology with BGP failover to achieve failover in under one second while keeping the same public static IP address and having no 4G data costs associated with the service. It's all part of the product. These services are fantastic for those clients that need high reliability and uptime over an NBN interface, which doesn't have the same SLAs and costs associated with the higher end fiber services. But fantastic to make sure that you've got good, reliable, stable connections that fail over in under one second. That's it from me guys. Hope you found this video informative and I'll see you in another video. Thanks very much. See ya.